this is Sydney Harbour, the scene of a raid not by bombers, but by Japanese submarines which crept in during the night for a surprise attack. But the surprise didn't come off. The powerful defences were on the alert. The Japanese know these waters well. In peacetime, their ships could come and go as they pleased. Many of them were manned by officers who we now know were officers of their fighting navy, sent for espionage. One particular peacetime visitor was this Japanese cadet training ship. It's infuriating to think how they were allowed to come as friends and do their work as enemies. Perhaps some of those boys were among the crews of the two-man submarines which did the job. The small submarines were probably towed by a larger undersea vessel to the spot. But the harbour patrol boats saw them before they could do much damage. And this is a reconstruction of the events of that exciting night. We have an eyewitness account from a Sydney journalist, George Godfrey. The sub was met by a hail of light and heavy calibre shells from the guns. She appeared to be hit heavily and disappeared almost immediately. Two torpedoes were fired. One missed, but the other hit a harbour wall and the explosion damaged an old boat tied alongside. Most of the crew escaped, and though some were trapped below, the survivors were quite cheerful about their experience. Three submarines are believed to have paid the price of their daring to balance the Australian wounded and those who gave their lives. They learned that once peaceful Sydney Harbour is now very much a danger zone. One of the submarines was salvaged, and it was found that her seams were opened up like a sieve. Divers reported that one torpedo had jammed on the way out. This made the work of raising her more than dangerous.